The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the December 19th, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make this one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that. And that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question, but you can't dial in, we've got you covered. Go ahead and send me an email. Send that off to Steve at TFNN.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. And, of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any in every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. A sea of green out there. All the U.S. indices that we track are trading the upside, as are each of the sectors with inside the S&P 500. Dow's up 199 points, half a percent, or nearly half a percent for the S&P, or 22 points, 69 points for the uh, NASDAQ 100, uh, one and six tenths percent for the Russell. That's a 32-point move. Semis are up 10. Tranny's up 113. You've got gold up 15 bucks. Silver's up 31 cents. You've got lights recruit up a buck 15. Natural gas is off nine pennies. Your treasury printed out 124, even Stephen. That's up 24 ticks. Leading the charge, dollar wise, the upside. You've got Gin Medical up 25 bucks, MicroStrategy up 15, BlackRock up 13, United Rentals up 13, Adobe up 10. To the downside is Nvidia off nine bucks, Super Micro down six bucks, Sit, Sit, Sci Time, maybe Sci Time Corporation off six bucks, Regenerant down six. Northern Corp down uh, four bucks. So we've got some movers and we've got some shakers. But let's begin our day by taking a look at what's going on inside the equity future contracts. We'll look at the daily and the weekly time frames momentarily. I'll change my screens. We'll get to those white background screens up there at the top row. You're going to see the daily time frames. Bottom row is going to be the weekly. For the ES Mini, today is going to become bar number eight of a TD9 count. Tomorrow, if the ES Mini closes above, 47.74, you will generate or it will generate a TD9 count top. Now, the TD9 count top pattern does not complete until Thursday. But what the ES Mini is suggesting to you and I is that maybe the high for the year is about to come in. Hmm, something to think about. If we take a look at the uh, weekly chart here for the uh, NQ, or for the ES Mini, it's also in bar number eight. It's also got wave number seven as a, a potential topping signal out there. So all that goes hand in hand. Now, it doesn't mean that the, e, that the e, so here's what I would also say. If the ES Mini's TD9 count top that is likely to generate, but we won't know until the end of business tomorrow, but it's likely to generate, if that gets negated, then we probably do run higher into the end of the year, which is when the weekly chart for the ES Mini would complete <coughs> complete its TD9 count top. Kind of makes sense out there? I hope so. It makes sense to Stevie, and that's all that we need to need at this moment in time. If we take a look at the NQ, today is going to complete bar number nine. That means you've got a TD9 count top that is going to form today inside of the NQ. Now, that pattern will complete tomorrow. That should take price back to its oscillator and change line. That's currently printed at 16,770. Turns out on the weekly time frame, we have bar number eight forming as well. So we know that that can be a top. Now, in order for bar number nine to complete, that means that next week the NQ has to close above 
16,234. So some downside movement, but, you know, 700, 800 points, something like that. But nothing uh, substantial, uh, nothing really, really significant, at least uh, based on the numbers that I'm taking a look at. So we've got a TD9 count top that's going to com confirm today inside the NQ. So definitely something to pay attention to. In the case of the Dow Equity Future contract, is bar number eight that's completing today. That says, just like the ES Mini, that we should get a TD9 count top by Thursday. Again, that would uh, first target to the downside would be that oscillator and change line. The weekly time frame, also bar number eight. So we've got everything really sinking up here. Now, the Russell 2000 is in a world of its own. And that world says that, hey, today's going to become bar number seven, likely. But what it has already, it doesn't have already, what it needs is a bearish reversal candle. That would confirm the uh, sell the D point pattern. It's got an A to B equal CD pattern that's in play right now, just waiting for a bearish reversal candle. If we got all four of those, the TD9 count tops inside the ES, the NQ, the Dow, and the Russell 2000 were to generate a uh, a sell the D point pattern, then we very well may be looking at the highs for the year inside of the uh, equity futures out there. We may. What else do we need in order for that to take place? Well, I'll tell you one thing that we need, and that's for the semiconductor index to also generate a top. So if we go over to some of its charts, now this is the socks that we're taking a look at. And here I've got multiple time frames up here. The one we're really focused on right now is the daily time frame. And what you can see right in effect, I'll expand out the daily chart. The daily chart does have an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. If you take a look at where that's potentially headed to, and it may head there, it's much higher than where we're traded right now. But here's the A to B point out there. I'll just simply move this over so as I can grab it. Move that over to where that C point, that hammer candle. And here the one-to-one -one price projection will get us up into the 40, let's call it the 4,300 area. But, and this is a but, this is a big but. Um, what, what needs to take place either today or tomorrow in order to generate a TD9 count top is price has to spike above the high from December 15th. And that high out there, that's up at 4161.92. And the question is, if the semis do not form a topping pattern, is the market likely to top? That's something you should go back and take a look at your own charts and do some research on out there. But we'll certainly be paying attention to the semiconductor index and what signals it generates for us. Now, what we'll also do, if we take a look at some of the short-term time frame charts, you've got a TD9 count top on the 130. You've got a Rhodes Mintum indicator top on the 65, as well as the 30-minute time frame charts out here. So the short-term time frame charts for the semis are starting to show some topping signals. But we really need a move above that high from December the 15th out there in order to generate some type of topping pattern. If we take a look at what's going on underneath the covers or at least the top eight holdings within inside the semiconductor, uh, this is as of... This is as of last night's close out here. So I want to make sure I get to the right choice. Broadcom is in a number one slot out there. It needs a spike above yesterday's high to get to bar number eight of a TD9 count. In the case of AMD, it's already done that job. It will complete a TD9 count top today if price closes above. Let me give you that number. That number is going to be 138.19. So you want to watch that. NVIDIA price is backing off today. Why is it backing off? Because yesterday's rally ran right up into its TD9 count breakdown resistance level 503.35. Is that a top? It can be a top, getting back to your breakdown resistance level. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We get back to this break. Let's take a look at some of the requests that have come in. Oxy, Devon Energy out there. Microsoft from Nancy. TMSNY from Jack. And NVIDIA from John. We'll be right back. Tigers, tis the season for leveling up your trading skills. Basil Chapman is happy to offer all opening call subscribers a free subscriber webinar, Wednesday, December 20th, 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern. Basil Chapman will be discussing major sectors and stocks that are coming off their lows in order to prepare your portfolio for 2024. This is a free webinar for all opening call subscribers. If you are not yet a subscriber, visit the front page of TFNN.com today to secure your spot for Wednesday, December 20th. TFNN, educating investors. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. 
TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. So we got the charts for Occidental Petroleum up on our screen. This is for Alton. The next two are going to be for Alton. Uh, his emails came in late yesterday. So, so in the case of Occidental Petroleum, on the daily time frame, what we can see out there is a nice TD9 count bottom. That uh, formed, it actually completed on December 13th. It formed on December the 12th. What transpired here on the trading day of December 14th was a gap up above its bear structure daily profile. That is a bullish signal. Now that candle has volume of 17 million shares. You're trading into that today with 2.5 million shares. So you got lighter volume. If you actually closed over that high, that high being, what the heck's going on with the keyboard here and the mouse, that high being 59.68, you would actually generate an A to B equals CD to the upside. But we don't necessarily need that in order to understand where price is likely headed to, and it's likely headed to 60.72. With price above the top of a very structured profile, above its oscillator and change line, likely wants a target 60.72. And 60.72, Alton, is the TD9 count breakdown level. We look at the weekly time frame chart, it's very obvious what Occidental Petroleum is doing. And it's been doing this for quite some time. On a weekly basis, this will take us back into the March time frame. And from March through December, we have been in one large, huge consolidation range out there. And basically, the consolidation low was hit at that TD9 count bottom from last week out there. What price should do here is it should at least go target the top of its profile, uh, the center of its profile, and its oscillator and change line. That's in the 6055, 6071 price area. And on a monthly time frame chart, you got a consolidation with inside its bullish structured profile as well. What price did here this month is it got back to that bullish structured area at 5484. It's really between 5005 and 5484 out there. So Occidental Petroleum does suggest that it wants to at least go target 6072. You get above that. You could be looking at 65.14 to 69.24. So, Alton, I hope that help. Alton, I hope that helps you out with regard to what Occidental Petroleum's charts are telling us from a technical standpoint. Devon Energy is another one of your requests, and if Devon Energy can close today and tomorrow above the top of its profile, that's printing out at 45.40. This should continue to move higher. Now, it's not like I have a bottom pattern out here with regard to Devon Energy. But on the other hand, I do. It looks like an A to B equals CD pattern. Let's go ahead and draw that in here as best we can. So we'll draw on the A to B line. 
We'll move that over to the C line. Let's see if it actually made it all the way down to that price projection area. And in fact, it got close enough. It got close enough. We got that bullish reversal candle on December the 13th. So you've got to buy the D point pattern. You've got a rejection of a swing point. Now that rejection of the swing point is the one from uh, October 6th out there. Now that swing point did volume of 11.5 million shares. Yeah, uh, was tested with 13 million. That wasn't a good test. It was tested with 24 million. That was a good. So we don't have a test and rejection on lighter volume. But nonetheless, if price is able to close above the top of that profile, that would suggest that we're likely targeting 49.35. And 49.35 is a, is its TD9 count breakdown level. However, and here's the however, you got a battle at 46.07. And 4607 happens to be the bottom of that weekly profile. So that's where our real battle is at, uh, Alton. So 4607, if price can clear that, then the 4935 area looks very attractive to us. So that's what I see when I take a look at Devon Energy. Nancy wants to take a look at Microsoft. And Nancy has identified the exact pattern that is in place out here. And that's a consolidation trading range. And that consolidation trading range, Nancy, as you know, is on the daily time frame. That daily time frame has a bull structured profile so its support zone is between 365.16 and 366.76 that level has been tested once twice three four five six times six times in about the last two weeks out there you think that's a very strong support level? Stevie thinks it is. The charts think that it is. And only a close blow, 365.16, would have us entertain the idea that the Rhodes Mintum indicator top, the TD9 count top that exists on the daily time frame, is going to take us lower. Right now, those tops have just simply set price back to support, and support is held each time. Yes, you are in a trading range between that uh, TD9 count top, basically. That level has been tested. But right now, with inside his profiles, are there any trade sets up, setups here? I don't think so. You are too close to resistance, with resistance being 374.75 out there. Um, so that's what I see now. You're also trading into, or it's trading into a, a recent swing point. That was from December 13th. That swing point has 30 million shares. So far, in about the first two hours of trading, we've done four points. Let's call it 5 million shares. You're moving into that swing point with half the volume out there. I would not expect Microsoft to bust through this consolidation. So I'd look at trading something else, Nance, or else if you're going to buy Microsoft and take some kind of trade you want to do it at that 365 ish area out there and if you were going to sell you'd be selling i'd say at the 377.93 area that's at green oscillator and change line i don't have anything here to suggest that that's what microsoft wants to do and get up there so great spotting uh, for you, Nancy, that yes, you are inside that trading range. You can just look at those, look at those daily profiles and use that for your targets to the upside and to the downside. Let's go on to our next request out here. This is coming in from triple seven double oh seven. I can't be double oh seven. It's got to be a triple seven uh, jack out there, and that is to take a look at ticker symbol. Now, for this one, I'm going to need to get my other screens up because I'm sure I've got nothing but delays here. The ticker symbol is T M S N Y. And TMSNY is trading at about 89.92, actually 90.05. Now that we take a look at our other screens out here, and I don't recall if there was actually a question, Jack, with regard to that. Uh, I'll have to post those charts after the show uh, uh, for you, Nancy, and I'll be, absolutely be happy to do that. So right now we take a look at this is uh, Tamino's AG sponsor. So I don't know. What this represents, uh, what currency, I see a, you know, a number of gaps out there. I, I don't have a, really a clue. And with regard to liquidity on this, basically there's zilch, nada, zip. For example, if we take a look at yesterday's trading action, there were 2,158 shares that traded hands out there. So if you're looking to trade something that's liquid, you look elsewhere because this is not very liquid at all. But with regard to what is it doing here, look at how that has held that green oscillator and change line. It has strong momentum to the upside. You probably didn't need Stevie Jack to tell you that, but that certainly is what's going on technically out here. Now, today is bar number seven of a TD nine count pattern. You could get a TD nine count top that forms between tomorrow, Wednesday and Friday of this week out there. We take a look at the weekly time frame chart. You're in bar number eight of a TD nine count, a top can take place between this week and the uh, began the uh, first week of uh, January out there. And if we look at the monthly time frame chart, the monthly is trying to take out a swing point. This swing point is from the month of June of 2023. Now the volume there was um, not applicable. 
Uh, 73,000 shares. That's a monthly chart. 73,000. Let's call it. Let's round it up. Then we can't round it up. 73.5. 73,000 shares. This month so far, you are at 34,000 shares. It is still somewhat early in the month. Not too early, though, right? Today's the 19th. Happy birthday to my dad. May he rest in peace out there. And so um, what that looks to me like this wants to continue to move higher, but you may get a top come the um, come the end of this week out here. And that would just take price back to its oscillator and change line. What you can see out here, Jack, is price needs to close below that oscillator and change line. That's currently printed 8950, by the way, in order for this to tell you that there's any kind of potential top that you need to be concerned with. Steve Rhodes with TFNM. We'll be right back. We're going to take a look at NVIDIA. We're going to take a look at ET and PRQR. Of course, I'd like to look at your request as well. Give us a call at 877-927-6648. We'll be right back. Tigers, tis the season for leveling up your trading skills. Basil Chapman is happy to offer all opening call subscribers a free subscriber webinar Wednesday, December 20th, 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern. Basil Chapman will be discussing major sectors and stocks that are coming off their lows in order to prepare your portfolio for 2024. This is a free webinar for all opening call subscribers. If you are not yet a subscriber, visit the front page of TFNN.com today to secure your spot for Wednesday, December 20th. TFNN, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back 
folks, so John C. the Tigers then wants to take a look at NVIDIA. What do we know about NVIDIA? Beautiful TD nine count bottom that formed out here that's taken price right back to its breakout level. That's at 503.35. Now, the swing point out here, the swing point was from November 20. That's its swing point high. That did volume of uh, 41 million shares, I believe. Yeah, 41 million shares. And yesterday, you moved into it with 41 million shares. So it's not like you're moving in with light volume, but price did find resistance where resistance was at, 503.35. Now, price is still above. It's a bear structured daily profile, and it's still above its green oscillator and change line. That means conditions are neutral. Now, the reason why I say they're neutral is because getting back to a breakdown level can be a top. Doesn't mean it's a top, but it can be a top. What you're looking for is some other kind of signal that it is. Well, if today price closes below 492.22, and right now we're at 491.32, and it does it with less than 56 million shares. Oh, well, that's not the swing. Hold on a minute here. 491.81. If price closed below 491.81, I don't know what I gave you at first, but that's the right one, 491.81, and it does with less than 41 million shares, we'd have a test rejection of a swing point on lighter volume. But guess what? It's done 23 million shares already today. So that ain't going to happen. It says, uh, my, my system here shows 17 million, but my other system that's more up-to-date and accurate has got 24 million shares already. So that's not going to be – it may be a rejection of the swing point low, but it won't be a, a – uh, it, it's with, with volume – that would say that at least the bottom of that swing point gets tested again. So overall, we're going to go with the neutral signal on the daily time frame for NVIDIA. On the weekly time frame, in the case of NVIDIA, price also running into resistance at the top of its bearish structured weekly profile. And that's up at the 505.48 level. It's two roads meant to indicator tops up in that range. You've got a uh, TD9 count top on the monthly time frame chart. But again, all that did was took price right back to the support area of its bullish structured profile. But it's also got resistance at 502.66. So here's what we can say about NVIDIA, John. It's up at resistance, whether it's daily, it's weekly, or it's monthly out there. If we're looking for some kind of a turn, I guess we turn to the short-term time frame charts. I don't guess we would turn to the short-term time frame charts and look for some kind of signal. So let's get over to active data out here. And what do we have? Well, we've got a Roadsman to indicator top that formed yesterday at 4 p.m. You gap to the downside this morning. You're below profile levels out here. Um, so what do you watch? Well, I'd watch the low. I'd watch the gap down from this morning. And if price starts trading below 488.95, we're headed lower. If it does it with more than 8 million shares, which um, is not likely outcome there, uh, you know, then you'd form potentially, and eh, I'd even go with the A to B equals CD pattern. But it would suggest to move back to 469.07. So you've got a, the first crack in the armor. So just simply got to go back to the daily charts out here. Really rely on those at this stage of the game. And watch the uh, profile. Watch the support. Watch the profile levels. Watch the oscillator and change line. And that's what I've got for you, John, with regard to NVIDIA. I hope that that helped you out as far as that review. Rich for life. I like that. Rich for life wants to take a look at E.T., Go home out there. But when we take a look at ET, it has nothing to do with going home. That's energy transfer. We take a look at energy transfer. What do we see out here? Now, that's a great question. I'll tell you what we see on the weekly chart. We see a good old-fashioned consolidation with inside profile levels. So let's start there. You're consolidating between 1328 at a support area and 1409 as a resistance level. If you can close this week um, above... 1383, odds favor move to 1409. Let's open up the daily chart. Let's see if we can figure out what this is doing, if there's any pattern out here. And voila, there's none. So what has it done here? So you've got a nice TD9 count top that formed on October 20th. That swing point high did volume of 9.8 million shares. You traded into it yesterday with 16 million shares. That says that price should be back up there. It hasn't gotten up there. The low is at uh, 1398. The high of the day so far today is up at 1393. Let me make sure of that. The high of the day is 1393. So price should get back up there and at least test that uh, swing point. Now, there's really no A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. Although, let me just check on the retracement of that C to D leg. Give me one second here. I'm going to do this off screen because I can use the Stevie A to B equals CD tool. I'm just looking to see on that C point. It was a 79% retracement. I'm referring to this hammer candle. What I'm looking at is this hammer candle from December 11th and comparing that with the low from November 1st. So it's a, it's a little bit above 0.786, but nonetheless, we'll go ahead and give it the A to B equals CD 
pattern out there. So if price can close above 1395, that's only going to get you up to 1416. 1416 is going to take us up to that uh, swing high from October 20th. That swing high is 1415 out there. So this is where all your commotion is right now. It's dealing with that swing point. You did move into it with some volume yesterday. So if you're in this trade, I'd stay with it. Oh, you're looking to re-enter. You're looking to re-enter. So you're looking to re-enter out here while price is up at this resistance, even though it's coming in with volume. I hesitate to suggest you try to jump on board now. Where is a good re-entry point? And that's a great question. So you sold. I think you recently sold, and that was a good move out there, knowing that you're coming into resistance. I'd have to say I'd go back to the daily time frame. I'd say if you can get price to pull back, simply because it did it two days ago, pull back and test that oscillator and change line, that would be your entry if you're really looking for that. But just realize on the daily and the weekly, the weekly's got that consolidation. The monthly chart looks pretty good, but it's also dealing with profile resistance. That's up at 1388 out there. Um, so I'd have to come back to the daily oscillator and change line. It's the only thing I've got right now that's printed out at 1365. So rich for life. I hope that helps you out and you have a great day. Dan inside the Tigers that wants to think of PR, PRQR out there. So let's get uh, those charts fired up here. And PRQR, I should have this memorized by now, but I don't. That is PROQR Therapeutics. That's why I don't have it uh, um, um, memorized. But we take a look at what is this doing. It looks pretty bullish to me. Here's your issue. Not really your issue, Dan, but here's the stock charts issue. It's called $2.29. You're trading at $2.25 right now. Why is it $2.29, Steve-O? Because at $2.29 is that weekly TD9 count breakdown res resistance. Now, you'd love to see price close above that. Why? Well, if price closes above that, then I don't see any other resistance out here other than yesterday's high. So yesterday's high thus far is a wave number seven top out here. And only if price pokes above yesterday's high will that get extended. The poke above would have to be somewhere above 2.28. So 229 would accomplish that task out there. If you don't have that, you have a valid top right now with on a daily time frame with price running into resistance on the weekly time frame and price dealing with resistance potentially on the monthly time frame as well. So all of that could be suggesting a retracement. Now the retracement or the pullback would be to 205 or 209. We get back from this break, Dan. I know you want to look at the weekly and the monthly, and we've done that. Let's just take a look at that 30-minute time frame chart, see if there's any kind of signals there that we need to keep an eye on. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. 
Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We're looking at the 30-minute chart here for PRQR. We don't uh, see any sign of a uh, top, a topping pattern, at least, that is uh, to speak of. Um, so there's nothing there for me to really assist you with. Here's what, the, here's what it looks like is going on. Price is dealing with this huge downdraft on a weekly basis. That was the week of March 31st. Volume on a weekly basis there was 16 million shares. As an example, last week you were trading up into that area with 995,000 shares. So this could be a very tough area to take out the resistance. So 229 is going to be your key nu number out there. If you can close above 229, Ideally, you'd like to be doing that with more than 2.3 million shares. So if it's too early to say what we're going to have this week, it looks like, you know, yesterday was about, what, 300,000 shares. So you could be moving in with much with lighter volume. You know, if it stays with that volume, Dan, you're looking at, what, 1.5 million shares or less than that. Um, so that's about all that I can see out here for PRQR. I do hope that that helps you out. And as always, thanks so much for taking the time to put in requests. The next request coming in from um, S&P inside the Tiger's Den. And S&P would like to take a look at uh, Jabba the Hut. H-U-T or Pizza Hut out there is uh, what we're going to take a look at. H-U-T is the symbol. And that's the Hut 8 Corp out there. It ain't Pizza Hut. Oh, well. We take a look at Hut 8 Corp out here, it's having a beautiful day as it takes out prior swing points out there. So that's what it's doing on a daily time frame. Not setting up any kind of A to B equals C. That's DVCs at this stage of the game out here. So where is it headed to? Well, it'd have to identify the next level of resistance. So let's pull this back just a tad. Where's the next level of resistance? So we have one at 1675. I'd actually put one right out here at a swing point. So on a daily basis, it would be the high of August 29th. That has 13.3 million shares. You're in it already today with um, 8.7 million. So that's the way you like to take on swing points. So that high out there is where it's gunning for. And that's at 1370. The high of the day so far has been 1369. How does that work? So it's gunning for the, uh, the you know, so now what, do you, now what do you do? So volume wise, you're taking on that swing point with volume. Absolutely. So even though it hasn't tested the top, as long as it closes inside that swing point, which it should, it should at least go tag that top. Will it take out 1370? I don't know. But if it does take out 1370 SNP, then a price target would become 1675. And what we can actually see out here on the daily time frame, it might be easier to do it on the weekly. Um, yeah, I'm just going to do it. You see a sideways consolidation, right? at least DBC's one. So let's go ahead and draw that pattern. And let me get my rectangle um, bar out here. And so, I mean, you could actually get it all the way up here. Yeah, you could, you could just, well, that's not, that's this week. So we're not gonna, well, here's the consolidation basically. So you've been in this nice consolidation. So that's what we're gonna use for it. And I'm just simply gonna move this consolidation pattern because if you do break out of it, 
then you have a measured move. And that measured move would take us up towards that 1820 level. 1820 is the weekly TD9 count breakdown level. So we do like what we see here volume-wise. You just want it to finally take out that resistance level, the high of August 29th. And if you do that, you'll have a successful consolidation breakout. And that ought to take us towards that 1675, 1820 level. On a monthly time frame, the next level of resistance is going to be its swing point out here from back in July. And that swing point is anywhere from the range of, well, I'll tell you what it is as soon as I move that chart over. That's anywhere from the range of 20, 1625 up to 2275 out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at Jabba the Hut. If we look at a 30-minute time frame chart for HUT out here, what do we have? We've got a Rogemintum indicator top. Now, price is not busted through a key level of support. The first key level of support would be the oscillator and change line. Price right now has found support there. That's at 1301. The low of the day is 1304. If price is, we also see a new profile formed yesterday below price. That is a bullish message as well. So the 30 minute time frame, it's got a top for sure, but its overall signal is neutral. It becomes less than neutral if price were to close below 1208. Why less than neutral? Because that would suggest a move back to 1022. We do not have that signal as we speak just yet. We're trading at 1296, which is below that oscillator and change. I know that's not what it shows on my chart, but I'm looking at my other screen out there. So watch the uh, bar here. This close at 12 noon. If you close below that, getting back to 1262 would be in the cards for you. So that's what I see when I take a look at HUT. Hope that helps you out, SNP. And as always, thank you for that request out there. Now, we don't have any other requests that are in the system. So why doesn't Stevie just take this uh, last three minutes we've got in this segment here? and just kind of go through some of the usual suspects. So what is Stevie looking at? So let's take a look at gold and the GDX. That's got to be on somebody's mind out there. Now, what we know about gold and the GDX right now and silver is that we've just got a good old-fashioned consolidation with inside its profile levels. So in the case of Goldilocks, that's between 2017.90 and 2062.90 out there. If price were able to take out the high of uh, 2062.90, uh, do with more than 231,000 contracts, you'd have a small A to B equals C to the upside pattern. In the case of silver, silver's got resistance up at the 2479 level out there. So until price gets up to that level, I really don't have much of a call. In the case of the GDX, the GDX has a couple of swing points that it's trading into. Which one's the higher one? This one from a couple days ago. That's got volume of 36 million shares. The prior swing point has volume of 33 million shares. In the case of the GDX, we're up right now with about 10 million shares, a little over two hours of trading. So it's moving into that swing point with similar volume, not with more volume, at least not yet, not in Stevie's mathematical extrapolation here. It's probably lighter volume. The price is above right now the top of its daily profile. The top of the daily profile on GDX is 31.62 out there. We're trading at 31.75. A close above 31.62 would be good. But what we're really looking for here is we're really looking for a close above. You know, what I would really say, I, I would really be using – the better A to B equals CD pattern is the one here that uses the swing point of December 1st. So if price can close above 3191 out there, we'll have an A to B and do it with more than 33 million shares. We'll have a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside. Until that takes place, we just have kind of a consolidation pattern that is setting up right now inside the GDX. And that matches what we see we take a look at uh, silver and uh, gold out here. So that's what I see we take a look at those charts. Let me close those down. Where do we go to next? What else is Stevie looking at? Well, I'm also looking at the equal weighted ETF. Remember when we began the show, we were taking a look at the equity future contracts. We were looking at the TD9 count patterns. If we take a look at here, the top panel are the equal weighted ETFs for the bottom panel. So, for example, the upper left is QQ, QQEW, the equal weighted ETF for the Qs. Bottom panel is the Qs themselves. The Qs are going to form bar number nine today. The QQE W needs a spike above 117.03. QQEW, I want to make sure that that has or has not happened. 117.03. Today's high is 117.12. Perfect. So what we've got out here is we have bar number eight of a TD9 count. So the, even we want, what I, the reason why I want to look at the equal weight is because if we equal weight's not confirming what we see in the weighted version, the equal weight is usually the one that is the winner out there. The winner, winner, chicken dinner. But we're likely going to get a TD9. Now, the QQEW, in order to form that TD9 count top, 
tomorrow you need to see a close about 11703. No. 116.30. 116.30 would be where price needs to close up tomorrow. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Tigers, tis the season for leveling up your trading skills. Basil Chapman is happy to offer all opening call subscribers a free subscriber webinar, Wednesday, December 20th, 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern. Basil Chapman will be discussing major sectors and stocks that are coming off their lows in order to prepare your portfolio for 2024. This is a free webinar for all opening call subscribers. If you are not yet a subscriber, visit the front page of TFNN.com today to secure your spot for Wednesday, December 20th. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're taking a look at the equal weighted ETFs uh, for the uh, S&P, the NASDAQ 100, and the Dow. And uh, we're looking at the uh, weighted ETFs for those same three. So the issue here is really the RSP, the equal weighted ETF for the S&P 500. There is no topping pattern that is in place out here. And price needs to spike above the high from December 14th. And that high out there is at 158.25. If price can sp so actually, price needs to close the day above 157.53. And that also needs to spike above. Doesn't have to do this today, but what it does have to do today? No, 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 no. Today's bar number seven. I take that back. Today's close must be above 155.41. So it looks like it'll do that. That'll be bar number seven. We're a day behind 
the actual SPY, what then has to happen is price has got to spike above. That would be between tomorrow and Friday. Price must spike above the 158.25 to possibly set up that TD9 count top for it. The Dow is going to do that. E D O W. That's the equal weight for the Dow. It's negated. It's wave number seven uh, top out here. But you're going to see you got bar number eight that's forming today. It should com uh, confirm that pattern tomorrow. The same thing inside the Dow diamonds out there. So that's what I see when we take a look at it. What I see, just to summarize, is I see the potential for a top in place out there keep your eye on the semiconductor index see if that forms a td9 count top and let's keep an eye on the rsp the equal weighted etf for the s p 500 as well folks thanks so much for joining me on terrific tuesday please have one yourself and i'll look forward to seeing you on wonderful wednesday thanks again be safe out there